Hello, my dear students. Welcome back to the lecture. So here we'll try to take few other uh, questions to what we have. Okay, the next question what you can get is why mild steel bars are not used in the construction anymore. Okay, very simple question, right? So before we understand this, we need to understand what are the different uh, types of rebar that is available. I'll put it here. Okay, so uh, okay, let me go in this way. Wait. Yeah. Okay, great. See, uh, previously we used to get a mild steel bar. Okay, mild steel. Mild steel. After that, we started to make use of HYST rebars. Uh, then we started to make use of TMT rebars. Okay, and now nowadays we get TMX also. Okay, great. So mild steel. After that, we started to get HYST rebar, and now we are getting TMT or TMX bar. Okay, great. Now the question is that. Why is that we are not using this mild steel rebar? Okay, and answer for that is first, mild steel bars don't have much yield stress when compared to HYST or TMT bars nowadays. Got it? That is about the yield stress, right? Uh, because mild steel we were getting only up to FE250. Beyond FE250, we were not getting mild steel. Then we started to go with 415, 500, 550, and today we have 600 also. But that is all possible because of this HYST and TMT rebar. So if you wanted uh, more yield stress, then the, uh, your mild steel was not able to do that. So that is why we shifted from mild steel to HYST or the TMT bar. The mild steel bars don't have a rips on it, unlike HYST or TMT bar. Like you can see it in the image, you see, these were my mild steel bar. They were very plain, isn't it? Plain rebar. Whereas nowadays, if you look at the rebar, which can be a TMT or TMX or HYST, you can see a lot of rips here. So these are the rips what we have given there. Earlier in the mild steel, this was not there. If this is not there, what will happen? There won't be a good bonding between the concrete, right? Because that is the reason we are not uh, using mild steel anymore. Next is mild steel have low percentage of carbon content, which results in giving less strength, but it's more ductile when which become helpful in the production of pipes and pipe fitting. That means this mild steel, see one thing you need to understand. Why is that the uh, rebar is uh, strong and all, right? Because the reason is that we have carbon in that. The more the carbon content, the greater is the strength to that. So that means if I take a Fe415 and Fe500 rebar, tell me which one will have more carbon content, the one which has more strength. So compared to 415 and 500, 500 has more yield strength. So that means the carbon percentage is also more. Now compared to 550 and 600, which one will have? Of course, 600 will have more strength. So there is more carbon in that, right? So that is how, uh, how that is what that is, uh, you know, uh, composition, uh, what we put. Uh, when we prepare such kind of rebars, the question is that the more the carbon content, the less is the ductility. Got it? Got it? What, what I'm trying to tell? The more the carbon content, the less is the ductility. Remember, why did we start to use uh, rebars uh, initially? Because they were ductile in nature. Good. But now what has happened? The higher the grade, the lesser is the ductility. So that is why you can see mild steel have low percentage of carbon content, which results in giving less strength but it's more ductile. Why it is more ductile? Because carbon content is very less. If the carbon content is very less, of course, the ductility is going to increase, right? Uh, so that is why mild steel, we nowadays, we use it in the pipes and the pipe fitting, right? Great. Hardness and toughness of mild steel bar is less as compared to TMT bar. Of course, hardness and toughness usually comes to that carbon content because more is a grade, more will be a toughness and more will be the strength. So that is why that is another reason. Most importantly, it is not resistant to corrosion so it is advisable not to use in the construction. The another reason, the prime reason is that this mild steel, they're not resistant to corrosion. Whereas your HYSD TMT bar, they're resistant to corrosion. I mean, they're resist, I mean, they can resist the corrosion. So that is another prime reason. Due to its plain surface, friction is less and it doesn't bond well with the concrete, which I already told. You can see it's a plain surface what we have. Here we have ribs, okay? If you're not able to pick my words, it is called as ribs, right? So this is called as ribs. So as a result of that, what will happen? A good friction will happen between the concrete and the rebar. They can be used in stirrup in beams, lateral ties in column. That means this, uh, what is that? Uh, yeah, a mild steel can be used in the stirrup and all. It's not required. Forget about this point. Leave it. Not required. Okay. We'll not make it complicated. And yeah, we don't use mild steel also for the stirrup and all. We use this only. Got it? Yeah. So if they ask you why mild steel is not used, you can tell two to three uh, answers. I'll quickly repeat it. We can tell. Uh, the first reason is that uh, they don't have much yield stress when compared to HYSD and the TMT bar. Second is that you can say very important thing. They're not resistant to corrosion. Second point, 
third point you can see since they have plane surface they don't have a rib surface there won't be a good friction and there won't be a good bond between the concrete and the rib bar three points if you tell it's well and good if you can remember all other points it's well and good if not no issues but try to understand the concept and try to understand about the uh, the ductility and the carbon content the greater the carbon content more is the strength more is the toughness but less is the ductility so in my if they, they may ask you one question out of mild steel and hy steel bar tell which one is ductile very simple mild steel is ductile uh, is a more ductile compared to the hy steel bar if you ask you one more question can you tell me the reason behind that you can tell sir uh, more the carbon content the ductility is going to come down so hy steel bar has more strength compared to the mild steel so since it has more strength the carbon content is more so the ductility will be less in that whereas here the strength itself is less so what will happen uh, since the strength itself is less what will happen the carbon content is less and if the carbon content is less the ductility is going to increase very simple and explanation you can do got it yeah now we'll go to the another question very uh, interesting question where do we place main ribas in cantilever and where is tension in that beam okay so first uh, first try to understand we have different types of beams right we have simply supported we have cantilever and then we have fixed beams and then we have overhanging beam practically all the beams what we have uh, what we see in the construction is all uh, fixed beam also fixed beam and they are not 100% fixed 100% fixed beam 100% simply supported beam is never achievable on the site right so there is a more reason to that it is not required but still i'll explain you okay anyhow uh, yeah so we'll start with that see simply supported beam is practically not possible on the rcc unless you do proper uh, detailing of that okay this much is understood try to understand we have simply supported beam we have cantilever we have fixed we have overhanging beam enough all those prop beam and all uh, practically uh, we don't use it unless there is a need for that okay you might have studied about prop beam and all uh, practically not possible got it yeah so rebars or steel is always placed in the tension zone first thing you need to remember whatever steel we provide we always place it in the tension zone i'll ask you one question in a simply supported beam where is the tension and in the cantilever beam where is the tension so just remember and i'll come back to this question a bit later okay in case of cantilever beam and or the slab the tension is at the top so the bars are placed at the top i'll i'll explain all this through a image just stay with me okay so wherever there is a tension we are going to provide steel there so in the cantilever beam the tension is at the top since the tension is at the top what we are going to do we are going to provide the reinforcement at the top we provide bars in the bottom also but it's a nominal reinforcement which is provided to support the stirrup that means now i told tension is at the top i'll provide the top steel what about the bottom portion bottom also will provide steel but they are nominal steel that means very less diameter or minimum number of steel will provide why so that we can keep the stirrup if you don't provide the bottom steel okay where you are going to hang your stirrup right so in order to support the stirrup we are going to provide the nominal reinforcement got up to here your concepts are clear yeah now we'll come to this particular diagram yeah so look at this particular image now okay this is a fixed beam right this end is fixed and this is a cantilever beam now got it yeah so and let us say i'm applying a load on this or instead of telling applying a load uh, all your friends are sitting on this okay imagine all your friends wait let me put it in this way and make it more funnier imagine all your friends are sitting on this okay Oh, since they're sitting, we'll make something like that. Okay, yeah, your friends are sitting on this. Okay, on this beam, your friends all are a load who are sitting on this beam. Got it? Good. Now, so can I represent something like this? See, this is my fixed beam. Okay, fixed support I have given. This is a beam what I have. W into L. This is a UDL load. That is your friends are sitting. It's applying a load. So if I ask you to draw. SFD that is shear force diagram and bending moment diagram which you had done in your engineering days can you do it very simple your shear force will be something like this let us say this is shear okay this is your beam and it's going to linearly vary it's something like this isn't it great and if i ask you to put the bending moment diagram of course this is wl square by 2 isn't it this is wl square by 2 and it is here so this is a bending moment diagram isn't it so entire thing is negative what is this is entire thing is negative right yeah so where is the tension now imagine this is a beam what i have and this is a fixed support i'm going to fix it now if i try to apply load on it what is happening look at the scale the scale is trying to go up that means tension where is the tension created tension is created up right 
So wherever there is a tension created, I'm going to provide the steel. So always remember in the cantilever beam, we are going to provide a uh, steel at the top. And uh, now what is the use of all this uh, shear force diagram and bending moment diagram for steel? My bending moment diagram is important since it is a negative bending moment I'm getting right. What is this? When I put this negative, what do you understand by this? Hogging bending moment. If I put negative, it's called as negative bending moment or it is called as I'll write for your easiness. It is called as negative or it is called as hogging bending moment. So wherever there is negative or hogging bending moment, we need to provide top steel. So that is why in cantilever, we provide the top steel, right? I'll change the case now. Now let us say I'm giving you a simply supported beam. So where you're going to provide steel. Now for simply supported, I'll do a small, uh, yeah, let us say this is a beam what I have. Okay. Tell me if you're applying a load on this, if you're applying a load on this, how it is going to deflect, how it's going to bend, it's going to bend something like this, isn't it? And what is this bending? It's a positive bending. That is what do you call this positive bending? It is called as sagging, sagging bending moment. So it's a positive bending moment. That means sagging, sagging bending moment. So I need to provide the bottom steel, right? Top steel is not required anymore. Why? Because it's sagging. That is positive bending moment. Positive bending moment means you have to provide bottom steel. So if you're putting a simply supported beam, in that case, your tension, your tension will be in the bottom. Okay. So there you have to provide the steel. Got my point? If it is a cantilever, you are going to provide it at the top. And if it is a simply supported, then you are going to provide it at the bottom. But wherever there is a tension, you are supposed to provide. So in simply supported beam, the tension is at the bottom. Okay. Okay. This is, this is, this is means positive bending moment. That is your tension is at the bottom. So if I do it in this way, say now I'm making it a simply supported. This is cantilever. This is simply support. I'm holding from both the end. I'm applying a force where your scale is trying to bend going down, right? So there is the, that is a place where the tension is happening. So you have to provide the bottom reinforcement. So if it is a cantilever, it was trying to go up. So I'll provide the top steel. Got it. So even if you want me to explain it in a more better way, quickly, I'll do that. I'll do one. Uh, I'll quickly draw two beams. This is one beam. Let us say this is for cantilever and this is for simply supported. Okay. And I'll draw one more line. What is that line called? It is called as neutral axis. This line is called as neutral axis. Okay. So uh, the first case is cantilever. Can I write it here? Yeah. Cantilever. And this is your uh, simply supported. Okay. Simply supported. Got it. So in simply supported, your tension will be in the bottom. I'll write this T. I'll go with a different color. No, we'll go with yellow color. Yeah. Your tension will be at the bottom below the neutral axis and your compression will be at the. Okay. Only tension. I'll write tension will be the below neutral axis in the cantilever. Your tension will be above the neutral axis or at the top. You can say, got it. So wherever there is a tension, you're supposed to provide the reinforcement. Now I'll bring the reinforcement. Let us say this is my reinforcement. I'll provide the steel now. Let us say I'm providing a steel. So I'll provide the steel in the bottom portion. Okay, since tension is here, I'll provide steel in the bottom portion. In cantilever, tension is at the top. I'll provide the steel in the top in top portion. Got it? So this is how we are supposed to understand the difference between the cantilever and the simply supported and where you provide the steel. Again, there is more things to that. But uh, for your level, this is enough. For more uh, things, you can refer my construction methodology course where I explained all these things even in a more detailed way. Got it? Yeah. One more thing I want to tell, not required for your interview, but for your knowledge. Practically, 100% fixed beam is never possible. Practically, 100% simply supported beam is not possible. What is the reason? When I say 100% fixed, that means, let us say if this is my beam, I'm holding it from here. Can you see that? Yeah, I'll see it. Okay, see, this is my beam. I'm holding it from here. Now also it is fixed beam. Even tightly, if I try to hold, even then also it is fixed beam. Suppose if I lose, what will happen? Then also it is fixed beam. So what is 100%? 100% depends on condition. Now this is 100% for me. For another person, again, this is maybe another hundred percent. You're getting my point. The more, the more you hold it rigidly, the more tight it becomes. But all RCC sections are crack section. That means after some time, all your RCC section are going to get cracked. So the moment it gets cracked, whatever fixity you hold, no, it will reduce. So hundred percent fixity is never achievable. Huh. But to a certain extent, let us say 90 or 95 percent of fixed beam we can provide. Five percent, it's going to crack after some time. All RCC sections are crack section. It's going to crack after some time. Got it? Fine. Simply supported again, 
hundred percent simply supported is not possible. Why hundred percent simply supported is not possible? So what is simply supported? See, I'll say okay. How did this is simply supported? This is one support. This is sub seconds. But at least this and this is a beam. See, I'll do it here. If this is a beam, okay, we'll do it in this way. This is one support, okay, and this is my another support. Wait, one support, okay. This is my second support, okay. And let us say I'm providing a reinforcement. So when you provide the reinforcement. Your rebar and concrete will have certain bonding between them, right? If this is a support in the sense, this will be a column, okay? And this is your beam. From your beam, you are inserting a reinforcement. From beam, you are inserting a reinforcement, and you are going to give a kind of a small development length here, small development length here. Similarly, you are going to give a bottom reinforcement. Your steel is going to come, okay? Right. So some portion of the steel will get embedded into the concrete, isn't it? So. So when some po some portion of the steel will get inserted into the concrete, so a small bond will happen. A small fixity will remain. I cannot say hundred percent simply supported due to the bonding between the steel and the concrete. Some fixity will happen. So practically hundred percent simply supported is also not possible. But we can say okay ninety percent simply supported. Okay ninety percent simply supported in the sense it will act like a simply support, but there is a small bond between them. Okay. I hope you are able to understand, but it's a very deep level understanding what I'm trying to tell, which 95% of people don't know that. Okay, so that is what you need to understand, but not required in the interview level. Uh, for your knowledge, it's enough. Okay, great. So I think uh, two questions we have taken up about the cantilever and also about the uh, yeah about HYSD bar and all. Yeah. So I hope I was able to convey you most of the thing. We are able to understand what is cantilever beam. What is simply supported? Where do you provide the steel in the cantilever? Where do you provide steel in the simply supported? And also we understood about the mild steel, HYSD, TMT bar. Got it? So we'll see you back in the next lecture. Thank you.